first of all, behind, you've got to be sure to get the dominant care construct. So if you say trust is the dominant care mood by which these people will begin to relate to you, where you will begin to understand, but you've got to be sure that you're on the right dominant care construct. You cannot assume that that trust is going to work with everyone. And in fact, of the 60-some that I discovered, the number one universal, because see, with my theory, I wanted to say what's universal and what's diverse. I found lots of diversity. And at one time, you know, nurses and others say, there's only one way you give care. Don't you know that? Oh, I said, I don't know. We don't know the meaning. We don't know what care. We don't know the symbols. We don't know the actions. So I would not rest with that. So the number one thing that became universal, which I asked nurses to know, and should be as a part, number one is not trust. Number one care construct is respect. Respecto, respect. How powerful that is. If you don't respect the person you're talking to, if you don't respect what they're saying, if you don't appreciate the culture, you're way off. Now, once you find, and they, the respect is that, and they know that, and they even know that you know how to address the males and the females and the Hispanic, when you are sensitive to even what they wore to come see you, you respected their gown, you respected whatever it was. Modalities of care, doing with understanding. Nursing is a doing culture, but it must be doing with understanding. So I developed three modalities. That means modes, not rigids. They are enablers that help the nurse to get to how do I make decisions with, not alone, with the client or the consumer or the group or community. And the second one, what actions might I take with them, not you alone. It's always a reciprocal. I developed three modalities which are very, very unique. The first one is cultural care, preservation, and maintenance. That means you preserve that which functions well, that works well, that is acceptable, and that is congruent. Second one is cultural care, accommodation. How can you accommodate something they want? Or negotiate with them. I left that alternative. And the third modality that means a mode. These are not demands or you must. You, you, you work carefully with them. And that's cultural care patterning or restructuring. It is the last one that is the most difficult for nurses. The second one is difficult too. I must say also the first one is hard to do maintenance when you know you want to do something that has been done that way for some time. And this is for the culture, too. So that, for example, as I studied the southern cultures, largely African Americans, when I lived in Alabama and studied two villages. And one of the things that I discovered just serendipitously when I was in the home were these terrible wounds they had were red, and I'd look at it, and clinically, I think, ooh, what is that? Ooh, Mrs., that's good stuff. I said, what is it? It's gasoline. It heals. I said, really? Who prescribed this? The doctor. He said, okay. He said, okay. I said, really? Do you think it works? Well, it's kind of sore. And here it was all swollen and red. And that's when I used to carry some of my own little kind of natural things. I had a tube of... A and D ointment. And I thought this might be an appropriate thing to see if they might want to consider that. You never know. They could reject it right away. And the nurse has got to be ready for it. 
They can say, no, we don't like that because it's too greasy. They said, no, what is it? And then I had to demonstrate on my own skin and tell them a story about something that was open and how this helped heal it. Well, they thought that was intriguing. And pretty soon, I said, what do you think? Oh, they said, me like, I like. So I said, suppose we try? They said, yes, so that's cultural care maintenance. They decided they wanted it. They'd like to preserve it if it worked. And I said, you'd have to use it for a while. You can't just leave it. You've got to work it for a while. I had to leave this on my hand for quite a period of time. All right, all right. So I negotiated with them on time and that they'd have to stay with it to make it help work. But then I had to go to the next thing, which was cultural care repatterning and restructuring because the doctor had been ordering that as being kind it was a generic, they liked it, therefore let them use it. And if, you know, as if to say, if you're dumb enough to use it, why are you using it? If that's what you want, I'm not going to stop you and they won't change. I don't, we don't take that position. We don't know when change may occur. So I had to go to the doctor and I had to talk to him about this. And that we had talked about it, I had showed him the tube, and of course he had better materials. I said, no. They sort of like this, and it seems mild, and it seems something they can carry as a tube, and they'd like it. So I finally convinced him, you know, I had to negotiate with him. If they like it, will you permit and help them to use it? You promise? And yes, 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 if you think that's going to work. I said, I don't know. We're going to have to see. And then I had to go further because he said, well, we've done this for now. I've been here over 40 years, and we've used gasoline to heal the wounds. I said, well, maybe there's some way we could get this restructured. You don't have to have that. Is it written down there? Yes, here it is, in the paper as a policy. Get quick to get them in and get them out, give some gasoline, pour it on the wound. Now, can you imagine pouring gasoline on an open wound? I suppose I could have said for malpractice. But no, I didn't threaten him that way. I said, I think there is a better way, and they're now rethinking about this. Let's give it a try. Would you be willing to work with them and with me to get this repatterned, restructured within your organization? Well, he said, all right. He said, I don't think it'll work, but anyway. So we did, and of course it worked, and they were very, and still today, I've gone back 10 years later, they all have their tubes of A&D, and they're using it regularly. The privilege of transcultural care, the ability to transform. First of all, I think if you get into the transculture, you've got to have some time. And if you really have some interest in patients and want to help them, you must give some time. We are so time bound, we miss so much. Secondly, I would have to say is that <clears throat> If you keep the goal and the purpose of transcultural to provide care that's going to be beneficial, helpful, assistive, supportive, and therapeutic in that broad sense, then you have got to maintain an open discovery mind. If you don't keep that, you're going to be locked out and you're going to miss the important things. But you're in a unique position that privilege of the nurse to work closely with the client in the hospital and in the home, oh, it's so valuable. And, you know, this institution stresses community. And uh, Dr. Orton, all of them have this wonderful project on community care. They're in the home. And these nurses can tell you what a unique privilege because they see the whole thing. They see the context, and transculture deals with context. That's the totality of the situation. It's not a little piece of something. It's more than that. They put the whole thing together, and they get the picture. It was like when I was in the Pacific Islands. They were having a terrible time in working with the mothers in the kinds of foods those children would eat. 
And when I sat with them and I listened to what are the kinds of foods that they're introducing? Well, they weren't American foods. They were poi, which is a Hawaiian soft food. Perfect. It's one of the most beneficial foods. And we pulled that out and said, you know, let's think about using that and maintaining poi because that's indigenous and they love it. It comes from a certain plant. And it just transformed the whole thing. The kids begin to eat, the kids begin to gain weight, the kids begin to change. The mothers were happy, the community nurses, public health nurses were happy. And it was a complete transformation. And that's when we say transcultural can transform. Concepts of Enabling in Transcultural Nursing The concept of enable. What is it that enables them and you to relate, to tell? to discover, to know, to get the depth of understanding. It's a beautiful concept, enablers. You enable, they enable, you enable. And if you get that concept that's in holds with you, you're going to be very effective with them. They like it. And that's why people will say, we like what you're doing. This is the first time we've had this kind of openness we usually don't. We have these questionnaires. When did you spit? When did you eat? When did you go to the bowel? All this rigidity. You don't have to do that. All you have to say is, I would like to learn about. Could you or would you tell me about? Stop and let them say it. Not you. And listen. So listening and observing and cueing in are critical to transcultural nursing. An integrated community through transcultural nursing. Community nurses have a gold mine, a very special privilege to work with people and to discover with people. And out of this should come a wealth of new ideas. In 10 years or five years from now, it will not be what people think in this community is nursing. It will be a different, whole different approach. But the approach will be the high sensitivity to the diversity with uh, cultures within the community because they're going to keep increasing. And people where they know there's openness will move in just like a flow. And then they've got to figure out how do they work with them. What they will do is learn to use the theory and the principles and the ways to work with them. And that unlocks the knowledge. It unlocks the relationships. And so if you want to get to, quote, an integrated community, and whatever that may mean, the only way they're going to do it is through transcultural and using the theory.